welcome back to our channel. Today I am here with the Stassi video. Can we get a big yay? <laughs> yay, Stassi! So it's not that I don't want to bring you guys lots and lots of Stassi videos and Harper videos. I do. I really do. It's just that I haven't really done much different um, since our last videos. So um, there's really not much else to say, but I figured today you could get ready with us and I will give you a little update on the princess here and you can see exactly what we're doing these days to get her ready in the morning. Now, this is her just waking up. So this is how she looks. She is quite a mess right here, right? She looks a mess. Uh, but I just wanted to start everything from start to finish to show you exactly what I have been doing to get her ready in the mornings. Now, Stasi is a little over two years old. She turned two in May, and right now it is at the end of July, so she's a little over two. She's absolutely the best dog ever. Well, Harper is too, our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. But I couldn't be more happy with the type of dog that she is. She's just so, so sweet, so calm. She's playful, and yet she is calm too. So she's just a sweetheart. She's She loves everyone. She has the best temperament ever. And I really believe, she got something in her eye. She got a gookie in her eye. I really believe that great breeding is a part of her temperament, of her great temperament. It is a testimony to you know, her breeder, that she is just an absolutely amazing little dog. So she's still eating her raw food. She eats nature's variety, raw bites in the morning, and true dog, freeze-dried or dehydrated, freeze-dried, I believe, um, raw food in the evening. So she's still been doing that and doing really well on that. So we're not changing that at all. And she sleeps with me now. She, you know, is doing great in the bed with me and she loves it. I love it. And so we're doing, you know, really good with that. And then other than that, you know, oh, well, she's not spayed yet. So I do not plan on getting her spayed anytime soon. There's no reason for me to do so. I, you know, don't feel like the, the heat are that big of a deal. She usually comes in about every mm, eight months or so, and it's really not that big of a deal when she comes into season. She is not around any other dog. She is not around any male dogs, and she would never have a chance of getting pregnant. So that you know would be a major concern if she was, but she really isn't. So I'm not getting her spayed anytime soon. As she gets into her older e her older years, I may um, spay her just to reduce the risk of the uterine infection called pyometra. But I am looking into the possibilities of doing an ovary sparing spay whenever that time comes. And the same with Harper. So like I said, there's nothing really that has been anything earth shattering new in our lives as far as the dogs are concerned. I haven't really bought any new bows, so I haven't been able to bring you like a bow haul because we have done all of those already and we haven't bought anything new. So we're just gonna just get ready with her this morning and show you exactly what I do to get her ready, which you have all seen before. <laughs> There's really not much new there. So the first thing I'm going to do would be to take out her bow. And I am using my favorite band scissor removal, or band removal scissors, actually. I cannot get these anymore. I don't know where I got this pair from, but it's the best pair that I have. I have like three pair total, but my others are just not as good as these little gems. And sorry, I can't tell you where I got them because I can't even remember where I got them. I got these years ago and they're the best. I really love them. So I'm just pulling the band away from her hair and snipping so that I don't cut her hair accidentally. Okay. 
And I'm using the little five inch face comb to comb her hair back. So the first part of her groom in the morning is basically combing her out. Now, her tearing has gotten so much better, and I really believe that it is the shape of her head has changed because really it's gotten, I would say, a good 95% better than what it used to be. She, you can see she's a little bit damp here, but not bad because this is like, this, she hasn't been groomed since yesterday morning, so this is a full 24 hours of what she looks like after being groomed. And you can see that she's really not stained, and so I'm really loving that. I'm really loving, because I was a little concerned because she had, was tearing so much. I'm like, oh my goodness, am I going to have to put up with this for the rest of her life? But thank goodness... I would guess probably, I don't know, maybe seven or eight months ago, I noticed a huge difference in her, in her tearing. And, you know, that's what causes stains. If you, if you can fix the tearing, you will fix the staining. If you can't fix the tearing, you're always going to deal with wet face and I really, you know, haven't been doing anything differently. I just believe that her head has matured out and it has changed the way that her tears, you know, flow. And they, because her tear ducts were not really blocked. So it was just the shape of her face. And that's coming from the ophthalmologist. So I think that her head changed. And part of that has a lot to do with her not being spayed. Because when you spay a dog, especially early, their head does not develop like it does when those hormones are there. All right, so I'm gonna just do exactly what I normally do so that you can see our process. I do use this, which maybe this has a big difference in the non-tearing part of it. I believe that it does have a difference as well um, as the shape of her face. This is the Chris Christensen Peace and Kindness. It's colloidal silver. And basically what it does is it's almost like an allergy, um, an allergy slash antibiotic slash yeast helper killer or whatever but I do use this and what I do is I give her like two spritz in each eye every morning I used to use the eye wash but I don't even do that anymore I just use this all right so I'm gonna let that sit and then the next thing that I do is I start combing her out now, I use two different products. I will use this Royal Treatment Brushless with Marula Oil, or I will use this, the Shining Ultimate Shine Spray, either one. This one is my favorite. It, what it does is it gets, and you can see I put this on here for my pet sitter. It, I said, use for static electricity. So if I were just to start combing her, it would, you know, I wouldn't get the job done quite as well because the static, the static electricity will really just drive you crazy. So I love this product because it cuts down on the static electricity. I have found that by spraying the comb, and this is a Chris Christensen butter comb, works better than spraying her directly because they don't like, you know, things that are highly scented. And so I just find that this works a lot better. She still does get naughty and we definitely need to brush her or comb her out every day still. Sometimes I do twice a day, but to be all honest, 
a lot of times lately, it's just once a day and we, we're doing fine with that. It would be better if I could just do it twice a day, but you know, life gets in the way and everyone is busy, including myself. So I just go through, you know, the parts of her body. The good thing about combing her out at night is I usually do that in front of, like in my bed while I'm watching TV and I put her on her back and I'm able to get underneath her armpits really well and like her belly and things like that. So that works out really, you know, really well for that. So I try and do it twice a day, but not every day I can get to the evening one. Cause mama is tired, huh? Yeah. <laughs> She is such a sweetheart. She is such a good girl. Now, I've gotten so many questions on how do I get my Shizu to be so calm like Stasi? Um, I I don't know, guys. I mean, I don't do anything to, you know, make her calm. I don't do anything at all. She's just a really good dog. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I think that her, you know, her breeder has an excellent breeding program and she really breeds for not only confirmation, you know, which is the looks of a dog, but she also breeds for temperament. So when you are out there looking for a Shizu, you need to really, really research your breeders and make sure that they are breeding for temperament. And the only way to do that is to ask a lot of questions, find other people who have other Shizus or any breed, really. Um, so, I, you know, since we lost our little Chihuahuas, I've been itching to get another dog. So that's a little confession right now. We're having a we're having a confessional while we are combing Miss Stasi out. And look at the hair that comes out of there. So you can see that this definitely works. Um, yeah, so I'm, I've been, you know, the dog lover in me wants another dog. I would love to get another dog. I would never have another Shizu like at, at the same time as Stasi. So that is out because I can only handle one, you know, very high maintenance dog like this at a time. So I'll never get another Shizu at the same time. Um, Cavaliers, I, that's my other, it's my second favorite breed. And you know what? It, it's not in any order. I love the Shizu and the Cavalier the same. I love them both. And those are my breeds. But I would never have two Cavaliers at the same time. Cavaliers are very, very needy as far as they want to be in your face, on your lap, with you, by you at all times. And so I feel that two of them, um, and I won't say never to that because maybe, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not being, you know, fair with that because I know that there are lots of people that have more than one Cavalier. So... I'm not going to say that I wouldn't get two Cavaliers at one time. I'm going to retract that statement because who knows? I may. So, you know, the other breed that I love but I don't think is the breed for me is a fluffy Corgi. I love fluffy Corgis. Uh, my friend has one. And every time I see pictures of her, I just like say, oh my goodness, I love her. She's so cute with those little bitty legs and the little, you know, but, but I don't think it's the breed for me, sadly, because I would, I would have one, but I think they might be a little like hyper for me. Stasi and Harper are just so sweet, so loving, so chilled out that I don't know if I would really want any other type of personality other than theirs. So I don't think that that's the breed for me, even though, you know, I'm still kind of in the researching mode. 
Um, and then, you know, as much as I think, you know, oh, I would love another dog, that's the dog lover in me talking, but the sensible part of me, you know, says no. Two is enough, two is good. So I don't know, what, what do you think? What do you think? Um, leave it in the comment section below if you have a, a suggestion for me. My son wants a big dog and that's absolutely out of the question. I am not getting a big dog because it is not conducive to our lifestyle. I am not one that, you know, goes outside and rigorously exercises my dogs. I don't, you know, take them on, you know, long walks. So a big dog is out. I told him that when he moves out, then he can get whatever type of dog he wants as long as he can afford to take care of the dog. So he wants a German Shepherd or a Golden Retriever. That is not happening. I already told him that if it cannot pee pee on a potty pad indoors, then that's not the dog for us. And we may just keep, you know, Stassi and Harper and be happy and be content with that. Because we are. We are very, I am very, very content with Stassi and Harper. It's just the dog lover in me that, you know, every now and then I get weak moments and say, oh, maybe I should get another dog since, you know, we just have the two. But I don't know. Stassi says she thinks that's a horrible idea. Right, Stassi? Do you think that's a horrible idea? Yeah, you need to keep telling Mama that. You need to keep telling me that. Okay, so once I comb out her body, and like I said, I can do a better job of combing out her body when she is on the bed, you will see that this looks pretty well. I mean, there are a lot of mornings where I do not use my Clarity No Rent Stain Remover. This is the product that I used to use every single morning. I couldn't go without it. I would use this on her, you know, on a um, paper towel and I would just, you know, wipe this area and then I would dry it with a blow dryer. But there are lots of mornings where I feel like, you know what, she does not even need that. And I am so, so, so happy because of course the less steps that we have to do and we have to do with Stassi, the better. When I do feel like she needs a little, you know, cleaning up in this area, I will use it, but I'm not gonna use it this morning because there's really no need to use it. She doesn't have any staining and I love that. So I am gonna use a little piece of paper towel to kind of dry off the area where the peace and kindness kind of dripped on her fur. So we'll just dry that off a little bit. So I got this grooming pillow on Etsy. It is the small size. A lot of people ask me that. It's the small size. And there is a link somewhere in one of my videos. Um, you can look up morning routine video, I believe, and there is a link to the maker of this. And I probably have to order her another one because this one's getting a little nasty. And I don't know how to clean it. You know, it's made out of satin. So I don't know if you really can clean that. But I mean, look how pretty her face is. It's, it's really, you know, under control, which I'm so happy about. So I think the peace and kindness definitely, definitely is something that I can say um, is something that I started doing differently about eight months ago. I guess, I guess I've been using it. I don't know, you can look up in my videos to see when I did a video on it and tell you know how long I've been using it, which that's what's good for the videos. You can kind of see exactly you know when things occurred. So I don't know, should we do pigtails or should we do a top knot? What should we do, Stassi? What should we do? I think we will do pigtails today because we didn't have pigtails yesterday. So let me pick a set of pigtails. What are we going to do this morning? Put your head down. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's always hardest to pick which 
bows we're gonna use for the day. Let's see. It's nice and sunny outside today, so let's pick something sunny and summery. So I'm going to go with these. This is a set of tiny ties from Doggy Bow Ties. She is my favorite bow maker. I don't even know if she's open right now. She gets so many orders that she has to um, close her shop. And I don't know if she's open right now. Let's see, so can you see this? I think you can see this pretty well. All right, so we're gonna be using this type of band. This is the Armco Fox one quarter inch band. Oop, let's see, there we go. So Armco Fox one quarter inch band. I got these in bulk on eBay. These will probably get dry rot before I use them all. I got this actually over two years ago. And as you can see, I have not really put a dent in it. I still have so many of these. So when I do piggies, I use two of these. And then I use two of the Penguin. It is Armco and it's 5 16 of an inch. You do not need this brand. Armco is the brand. You don't need this brand. It's just the brand that I have. It's orthodontic brand actually. And I could not find it anywhere else except on eBay. But I used to use this with my little Yorkie that I had years ago and I really like them, so I stuck with them. But there's a lot of different band companies out there. Okay, so what you're going to need to do piggies is my five inch face comb and my rat tail comb. Both of these, and this is with the point, both of these are from Chris Christensen. So I'm gonna try and do this from the side. I am over to the side, so it's a little bit more difficult to do this when I am not directly in front of her, but directly in front of her is where the camera is. So um, she just fits on this table. Good thing she's not a little bit bigger. She is 10 pounds, by the way. She looks a whole lot bigger than that, but she is only 10 pounds. She's just got a lot of hair. So what I do is I go from the middle of her nose, there we go, from the middle of her nose, directly up the middle, and I make a part. And again, this will probably not be the best piggies that we ever do, because I am on an angle. All right, so I wanna make sure that those hairs are not going in her face. All right, so then once I make the initial part down the center of her face, judging by where her nose is, then I will make another part, I guess about that far. I don't know, what is that? An inch and a half maybe? I guess an inch and a half. I had a little bit too much. So I will make another part there and then I will come up to where her corner, outside corner of her eye is. And I will grab that part of hair. You don't want this section to be too deep. So you don't want it to be like two inches deep. Really an inch or so would be perfect. Okay, so you grab that up like this. And sometimes I have to like pull a little bit more hair because otherwise that will be too much hanging on the bottom. That's one of the things that is still, as many times as I do it, sometimes I just don't get it right and I have to redo it. Wish they had little guidelines, right? but they don't. Okay, so you kind of have to just look and see where it's going to, see I'm gonna pull some more down because I think that's gonna be too much. All right, I think that's good. So this is the section that a one quarter inch band is going to go on. And 
and I wrap this around twice. It's going to be a little tight, but it's okay because we're going to fix that. Now, I go about the same distance on the other eye because you want those to be even. And then, come down with that. Oh, this is so hard to do this on the side of her. She's gonna be all crazy looking. I just have a fear of that. Oh, that's my phone, notification. Okay. So that's about the same amount of fur or hair. So we're gonna put in another one quarter inch band on this side. Isn't she so good? <laughs> she could just like go to sleep. She's just so used to this. Another thing is that I started doing this when I first got her at 12 weeks old. So she's just very, very used to this. But again, she just has an awesome temperament and that is through great breeding. I can't say that enough. I just have to give her breeder props on that because she she just does have really, really, you know, great tempered dogs. And she is not the only breeder, so, you know, there are lots of great breeders out there. So you just have to, you have to look. You have to put in your research and you have to look at what, you know, you can find. Okay, so this is her first tiny tie. I'm going to put it over each of those bands and I'm going to situate it like that. And then this side. Okay. All right. And then I'm gonna go behind this and just grab a section of hair. This is gonna go back probably to the, probably to where her ear is, as far as how far back you go to pull that hair, almost to the back of her skull, not completely. And then I'm going to comb that hair together. I'm gonna, you know, just make it one big section of hair. Okay. There we go, there we go. Uh, make it one big section of hair. And then I'm going to take a 5 16 band and I'm gonna band those two sections together. And I usually do two or three wraps on that. Then I'm gonna take my rat tail comb and kind of bring that band down a little bit to meet the other band. And she's gonna look like a little Chinese dog. It's okay, we're gonna fix it. And then we're gonna do the same with the other side. So you're gonna have a part. Let's see, where's your foot? There we go. Okay. Hope you guys can see this, okay. So then you're gonna have a section of hair behind that first section, and then you're gonna comb it together. I absolutely love her in piggies. And she looks really good in yellow. Yellow is not my favorite color, but she looks good in yellow. I guess it's her coloring, just looks really good in yellow. Okay. So I'm banding the two sections of hair together. And then you see how this band is much higher than this band. So I wanna bring this down to kind of meet that other band because the bow will lay better if it's like that. Now you can see that her eyes are not comfortable and that is not good. So you do not leave them like this. You're gonna take your rat tail comb and you are going to gently pull out the hair so that it makes her eyes relaxed. So you're making like a poof. Now you guys, I am not an expert on this. 
Um, you know, I have had no training on this. It's just what I do, what I have learned from watching other YouTubers. And you know what? I'm not perfect. And so sometimes they look crappy and I have to redo them because I'm a perfectionist like that. And then sometimes I still can't get it looking right and we just go with it. Okay, so I am relaxing her eyes right now. So I am pulling them out, pulling out the hair so that you see it makes a little poof. Now, if when they open their eyes, if you can see the whites around their eyes or if their eyes look slanted at all, that means that you need to poof it out a little bit more to make their face or their eyes comfortable because no one wants to walk around with hair that is pulling on their eyes. Their comfort is the most important thing. And plus, it doesn't look pretty when it's like that. Okay, so we're gonna go with that. I think that that looks really cute. Okay, and then I am going to clean up her lip a little bit. So let's do that. I am using the wall um, trimmer. Again, I did a video on this little trimmer and it works really good for cleaning up her lip. I like to keep her lip very, very clean right here. Oh, you guys, her piggies look terrible, <laughs> but I'm not redoing it, so I'll redo it after. All right, so what I do for this is I hold her head so that we don't you know, hurt her and cut something that we're not supposed to, and again, she is very used to this. It's not her most favorite thing, but it is necessary. It does keep her area much cleaner. And when you can keep, keep them clean, you are definitely, you know, um, helping them health-wise so that they don't get any kind of bacterial infection or anything like that. So I'm gonna turn this on. And then I just do, Just small motions. And you have to be really careful that you don't cut anything that you don't want to cut. Quite a few months ago, I went over a little bit too far on this side, so this is still growing out because I had to reshape it and let that area grow back. So it's a lot easier for me to keep up with this if I do it like every few mornings because it just, you know, if there's a lot of hair there, it takes a lot more time to do this. And like I said, it's not her most favorite thing to do, but she's pretty good with it. So that is done. And so she's all cleaned up right there. I did do a video on this and it has the link to that little wall trimmer and I got it from Amazon. Oh, we have to fix this. <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea. And then the last step that I do is I do still use her drying powder every day. Now, I used to use the Paulmark's brand drying powder. This is not Paulmark's in this container. I just like the container, so I you know, continue putting it in there. But the powder that I am using is the Page One Eye Powder. So it's sort of the same thing. I don't know, you know what the difference is, but for some reason, I like the way the page one works better than the page one, than the paw marks. I like the page one better than the paw marks. So I just keep, you know, I'll fill it up with uh, in this container, because I like the container. And it's got a cute little paw on it. Don't knock that over. And for this, I use a cosmetic brush. And I think that this keeps the hair dry. And you know, that's all the name of the game, right? You gotta keep it dry. So this I put right underneath where she would tear. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, mama. Which, like I said, she's really not tearing too, too bad anymore. Some days are worse than others. Just like our eyes, 
you know, dogs have allergy eyes too. That could be a reason for tearing. But I just put it on these little areas right around her face. Or right around her snout, rather. You can see right here, this hair, this is the hair that's growing back from my screw up. For some reason, I just got really happy with the, with the trimmer and went all the way over here. And then when I did it, I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do? What did I do? And so we are in the process of it growing back. But it's growing back, and it'll be the same length eventually as the other sides, or the other areas, rather. All right, up oh, and yes, and then she's got to mess herself up. If only she could just stay just like this. We got to fix these. Oh my goodness, you're looking kind of rough there. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my little chit chat with you. It was mainly a chit chat video, I think, um, just to give you an update on Stassi and what's been going on, and then you get some Stassi time in to see her. So hopefully you got your Stassi fix. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support. And we will catch you on the next video. Right, Stassi? Right. Say bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys. Have a great day wherever you are. Bye-bye.